How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over something a little different. We're going to start with some historic brawl and then at the end of the video I'm going to do a little bit of recommendations I would do to make this a commander deck because I actually have this in both paper and digital. So to begin with, this is Shatterfang Squirrel General. He is a two and a green Squirrel Warrior 3-3 three, three with Forest Walk that says if one or more tokens will be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one green Squirrel creature tokens are created instead. That means any kind of token you make, treasure, blood, food, zombie, pest, whatever, you're going to get a squirrel with it as well. It also has an activated ability of black, sacrifice X squirrels, target creature gets plus X minus X until end of turn. So you can use that to boost your creatures up until they'll die, or you can just use them to remove other players things. That's what I usually do with that ability. So to begin with, the first two columns over here, here and here, are all token generators that I have in the deck. We have Chatter of the Squirrel, pay a green, make a squirrel token, flashes back for two and a green. Squirrel Sanctuary, pay a green, plays an enchantment, you get a 1-1 squirrel, and if a non-token creature of you control dies, you can pay a colorless and bounce it back to your hand to reuse. Jadar Ghoul Caller of Nephalia for two and a black, you get a 1-1 one, one wizard that at the beginning of your end step, you get a 2-2 two, two zombie token with Decayed, as long as you don't already have something with Decayed. Voldaren Bloodcaster, 2-1 flying vampire wizard for uh, one and a black. Uh, whenever another cre non-token creature you control dies, create a blood token, and when you create a blood token, if you have five or more, it flips over into, or flips over into Blood Bat Summoner which is a 3-3 flyer that at the beginning of combat you can turn a blood token into a 2-2 haste and flying bat. You also have Chatterstorm, one and a green. Sorcery, create a squirrel token and it has storm, so for every spell we've cast ahead of time in the turn or something that your opponent might have done at instant speed, you can go ahead and create a squirrel token for each one of those spells. Sapperling Migration, one and a green, uh, has a kicker of four, create two sapperlings. If it was kicked, you do four. Verdant Command, create two squirrel tokens, or counter the target loyalty ability on a planeswalker, or exile a card from a graveyard, or gain three life. You choose two of the modes. Uh, usually it's the two squirrels and gain three life, probably 99% of the time. Tend the Pest, a black and a green. Sack a creature in addition, you get X pest tokens, uh, and then and the X is where whatever the power of the sacrifice was. Chitter Spitter, two and a green, you get an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can sacrifice a token, and if you do put an acorn counter on the Chitter Spitter, it does not have to be a squirrel token. So you can sacrifice the pests, the sapperlings, or any of the treasure tokens or whatever that's laying around in order to um, put the charge, or excuse me, acorn counter on it. Scurry Hoke, two and a green for a one, two tree folk with evolve. Evolve means you have to play something with greater power or toughness than what the Scurry Oak has. And then if you do, it gets a counter. And whenever one or more counters are put on Scurry Oak, you can create a squirrel token. Scoot Swarm, for two and a green, uh, you have a landfall one, one insect that says whenever land enters the battlefield, you create a one, one insect token. And if you control six or more lands, you get a copy of the Scoot Swarm itself. So this can snowball really bad in the later game giving you lots of tokens to uh, boost Chatterfang's ability. Tireless Provisioner, for two and a green, you get a 3-2 Elf Scout. Landfall, when a land enters the battlefield, create a food or treasure token. Pretty straightforward. Ulvenwald Mysteries, for two and a green, you get an enchantment that says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you create a 1-1 Human Soldier token. So you can get, you can get tokens for non-creatures dying and you'll get those clues, and then when you pop the clues, you get another token, so you kind of get a two-for-one for, for Chatterfang's uh, token creation ability. Josu Vest Lich Knight, for two black-black, you get a four-five zombie knight, and it has a kicker of five in black. So for ten total mana, you get uh, a four-five menace. That also says, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create eight two-two zombie knight creature tokens with menace. And you'll see that in today's gameplay video. Dark Salvation, XX Black, Sorcery, target player creates X22 Black Zombie Creature Tokens, that's you, and then up to one target creature, theirs, gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each zombie that you control. So you pay double X, you get that many zombie tokens, and any zombie tokens that you might have generated from other abilities will count into this as well. You nuke their creature and you get a bunch more zombies, which then also gives Shatterfang more squirrels, and all is great. Tainted Adversary, one and a black, two, three with death touch. When it enters the battlefield, pay two and a black any number of times. Put that many plus one, plus one counters on him, and twice as many times as you paid, you get 
decayed zombies. Pitiless Plunderer for three and a black, you get a one four. And actually that's supposed to be in the another category, but that's okay. You get a one four human pirate that whenever another creature you control dies, you create a treasure token. This actually creates an infinite loop, which is gonna be in the gameplay later, where you have to have at least one squirrel, other squirrel token, Chatterfang, the plunderer, and a black mana. So there's basically four things that have to happen. But if you have that, every time you sack the squirrel to Chatterfang's ability, creates a treasure token, and then treasure token makes Chatterfang create another squirrel, and then that treasure token be, can be sacked for a black, sack the squirrel, and it just does it over and over again, and you can chain gun your opponent's creatures down. The more squirrels you have to throw into it at the time you start activating it, the quicker it'll work, because it's kind of onerous in arena, and you'll see that. Spore Swarm, three and a green instant, create three one one sapling creature tokens. Pretty straightforward. Ghoul Caller Gisa, three black black for a three four human wizard. Pay a black and tapper, sacrifice another creature. You create X two two black zombies where X is the sacrifice creature's power. This card has highly impressed me in this deck because if you just start sacking some of your fodder or whatever to her, if you get Chitter Spitter up high enough, you sacrifice like a 4-4 four four or a 5-5 five five squirrel, your board can get out of hand really quick if she's not put in check. Loth Spider Queen, three black black, four starting loyalty planeswalker. Uh, whenever a creature you can dies, put a loyalty counter on her, which a lot of things are gonna die in this deck, so that helps. You can pay zero, draw a card, lose a life, uh, minus three, or uh, create two spider to two on spider tokens, which you'll get uh, your squirrel tokens to go with those, and then minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever an opponent's dealt combat damage by one or more creatures. If you lost less, if they lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. It's not gonna matter. That's not gonna really be anything in this deck. We have Ogre Slumlord, three black black for a three three Ogre Rogue. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, or excuse me, it's whenever any non-token creature dies, you get a rat token and rats have death touch. Tender Shoot Dryad, four and a green. Ascend at the beginning of each upkeep, create a one one green sapling creature token. Saplings you control get plus two plus two as long as you have the city's blessing. And ascend means once you hit your 10th permanent, you get the city's blessing. So every upkeep, so if you're in a four player pod, you're gonna get four sapperlings and four squirrels as long as this thing lives its way through a turn cycle. Biogenic ooze, three green green, you get a two two ooze that brings a token into play with it and it can, it can poop out oozes along the way and it puts a counter on each ooze you control at the beginning of your end step. Just a great way to mana sync your stuff and be able to create more and more tokens as the game goes along. Burden Embrace, three green green, you get an enchantment aura, uh, the enchanted creature gets plus three plus three, and at the beginning of each upkeep, create a green sapling creature token so you can turn any of your, any of your creatures into a tender shoot dryad. Dray Keeper for three green black, you get two squirrel tokens when it comes into play, and for three and a black, you, all of your squirrels get plus one plus zero and gain menace until end of turn. This can actually end games if you have enough squirrels build up and you're able to swing wide. Skeletal Swarming for three black green. You get an enchantment that says each skeleton you control has trample, attacks each combat if able, and gets, and gets plus X plus zero equal to the number of skeletons you control. And at the beginning of your end step, you create a tapped skeleton creature token. If a creature died this turn, create two instead. Bootlegger Stash from Nuka Penna for five and a green, you get an artifact that gives your lands the ability to tap and create a treasure token. Very good. If you just want to sit on your open lands and then at the end of your last opponent's turn in the, in the pod, you just go ahead and tap them and start creating treasures. And if Chatterfang's out, you also get those squirrels. We also have Old Gnawbone for five green green, seven seven flying dragon. Uh, whenever one of your creatures deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. It's not just her, it's anything that hits. We also got Beldros Witherbloom for five black green, Elder Dragon four four flyer. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a pest token, just like the Dryad creating the Sapperlings, and you can pay 10 life and untap all your lands. You can only do this once per turn. So sometimes you're gonna do that and then just play a bunch of other stuff and blow the board out. The third column here is things that benefit from all the sacrifices, all the things coming into play, just everything that's kind of working for us. First, we have Liliana Dreadhorde General. For four black black, you get a Liliana Planeswalker, six starting loyalty. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card, plus one, create a zombie. Minus four, each player sacks two creatures, and minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each type and sacrifices the rest. If you get that far, you've probably won the game. Otherwise, we're mostly drawing cards and creating zombies. Moldervine Reclamation for three black green. You get an enchantment that says whenever a creature you control dies, gain one life and draw a card. You're sacking creatures to Shatterfang a lot. You're gonna draw some cards off this if you can get it down. Poison Tip Archer for two black green. You get a Reach Death Toucher, two three elf archer that says whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses a life. And again, as you're sacrificing 
and things, you can start incrementally damaging. Parallel lives for three and a green, you get an enchantment that says if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates double that amount instead. Skullpert Merchant, two and a black for one for Dwarf Citizen. And it, when it enters, you get a cre uh, treasure token, which will create a creature off of Chatterfang. And you can sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw cards. Bastion of Remembrance, two and a black. Uh, when it enters, you get a token. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses life, you gain a life. It's just a redundancy to go with the Poison Tip Archer. We have Woodland Champion, one and a green. Whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control, you put that many counters on it. This thing can get big really, really fast. And your opponents will likely have to either remove it or just have make sure they have chump blockers or they're just going to get run over. Prosperous Innkeeper, one and a green for a 1-1 one, one Halfling Citizen. When it enters, you create a treasure. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. You're going to be creating a bunch of creatures, so the inc incidental life gain off of this, it matters. Gallagreeters, kind of a pseudo Innkeeper. You can make treasures off of it when a creature comes into play, and you can gain a life every once in a while off of it. Just kind of a little more redundancy. Blood Artist, one and a black. Zero-one 1 Vampire, whenever it or another creature dies, target opponent loses a life, you gain a life. Again, more redundancy to go with the Bash and the poison tip and then last in this kind of category we have ravenous squirrel for a hybrid black green you get a 1-1 squirrel whenever you sacrifice an artifact or a creature you put counters on it and you can pay one black and green and you sacrifice an artifact or a creature and you gain a life draw a card again this thing will grow really quick and most of the time my opponents usually try to kill it before it gets out of control because as i'm sacrificing squirrels to Shatterfang, this thing just grows and grows and grows the fourth column here we have just kind of like your genetic Generic good stuff category things that you know synergize and work well within the deck I got dig up in here uh, is a tutor effect oftentimes I'll just go get a land with it but you know sometimes you, you can actually tutor and go get something really important to really ramp up what's going on deadly dispute one in a black sack a creature or an artifact draw two cards create a treasure Pretty straightforward. Mast Vandal for one and a green. It's a changeling one three. It says when it enters, you can exile a creature from your yard and get rid of an enchantment or an artifact or opponent controls. Once in a while, this comes in handy. Um, it counts as a squirrel since it has changeling. And so it benefits from some of those things. We got Metallic Mimic. It's a two colorless shapeshifter two one. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, squirrel. And then Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types, shapeshifter squirrel. Each other creature you control of the chosen type, squirrel will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Did you catch my hint? Name Squirrel. Throne of the God Pharaoh for two colorless. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tapped creatures you control. This thing is really good if you're going wide. You will do a lot of incidental damage because if they do not block and start killing things, they're gonna still get hit with extra damage. Then we have Toski Bearer of Secrets, three and a green for a 1-1 one, one Squirrel. Can't be countered, indestructible, attacks each combat if able, and whenever any of your creatures deal combat damage to another player, you draw a card. Uh, just a good way to get cards and refill your hand with how many th things we're creating. We also have Sarath, the Viper's Fang. For two green green, you get a Human Warlock. Other creatures you control have Death Touch. Untapped creatures have Hexproof, so it's a good way to protect your stuff. And then you can untap a creature or a land with her ability. And then the last category here, we have a bunch of removal. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre, everybody knows this thing. Negative X, negative X, things die, they lose life. Things on their side die, you gain life. Blood on the Snow, Board Wipe bring stuff back that's why the deck is running snowlands binding of the old gods two green black destroy a target get a land out things gain death touch profit we can next also have languish two black black all creatures get negative four negative four until end of turn uh, and then we also have crippling fear for two black black uh, choose a creature type squirrels creatures that aren't the chosen type get minus three minus three not squirrels until end of turn so yeah it's just a, a little bit of board sweeping um really wish we had damnation in the format but we don't and then we have our, our suite of Mana Ramp, Mana Rock. We got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Treasure Map, which also doubles as creating tre uh, treasure tokens for Shatterfang. It's really fun when this thing goes off and you have a Shatterfang on the board because you're also getting squirrels off those treasures. Cultivate and Haro, go get lands out of your deck, put them on the board. Heraldic Banner, choose green, make your squirrels bigger. And then we have Mana Rock slash Alternate Wincon. Strixhaven Stadium for a three colorless, you get an artifact that taps for a colorless and you put a point counter on the stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, you remove a point counter from it. And then whenever your creatures deal combat damage to an opponent, you put point counters on it. And then if this thing has 10 or more power or point counters on it, 
remove them all and the player you just hit loses the game. A nice way to get around the that pain in the neck life gain player that likes to be like, oh, I'm at 300 life, and you can just get removed from the game now. And then we have our basic, our land suite, Hive of the Tire, Eye of Tyrant, Phyrexian Tower, sacrifices creatures, so it works well within the deck. Snow Cover Swamp, Snow Cover Forest, Boseju and Takanuma, because they're just good. All of the black and green lands from Arena, Command Tower, because it's a multicolored deck, so why not? Same thing with Fable Passage, Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter, because you gotta be able to take out your opponent lands that are just kind of troublesome river tears outlook will go get either one of our lands and then shimmer turf veil is you pick a color and it taps for that color and it's a snow land to go with our blood on the snow that's the deck in a nutshell for the historic brawl version so let's hit it let's go into those games and have some fun that's a very keepable hand we got token generation and at least a couple early plays to go with it Let's kick this off with the Riveteer's Outlook. I'll go get a snow-covered swamp. I have two forests in my hand. And you'll note I have the squirrel uh, sleeves on this deck because I couldn't resist. I was like, how do I get a rat? Oh, okay. Um, hmm, temptation, temptation. Do I do the throne? Or do I do the Signet? I think I do the Throne so I can get some extra damage out of these. Oh, it's a rat deck. I should have figured on that. All right. Let's see here. I think... What I need to do is swing with these. He's not going to want to block. And we'll go ahead and play the Signet. No, I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to wipe the board next turn. So I'm not that concerned. I'm hoping to top deck a land so I can do it for three. This is going to hurt, though. Hey, I got my wish. The exterminator's here. Ooh, and they give up. Didn't like me wiping their board. Well, we got a little bit of land selection and ramp. And Burton Embrace is good to put on Chatterfang. Let's, yeah, let's go ahead and stick with this. Let's go ahead and dig up for a snow-covered swamp, I think. So depending on what they do next turn, we're either going to drop the Chitter Spitter or the, do the Harrow. Ambitious farmhand. Search for a basic. It has coven transform. Okay. I'm not that overly concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and drop death cap glade. And I'm trying to decide here what is better. I actually think I'm going to drop the Chitter Spitter and then put a stop at the beginning of my next turn. Because then I can do the Chitter Spitter, create the token, and then drop Chatter Fang. So I'm going to go ahead and do this before the phase passes. Resolve. I'll sack the token. 
draw. Alright, let's see here. Let's drop this. And let's go ahead and drop Chatterfang. Makes it so he's a little bigger. Oh, man. And he gets exiled. That's great. Let's do... That's on it. Is it? A, oh, when it trains. Okay. Oh, this is not a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and create some squirrels while we have the chance. And go ahead and activate the chitter spitter. And I'll go ahead and do or cancel, change that. Or actually, no, do that. Sorry, my brain is thinking ahead too hard here. I'm going to get um, at least one black. Actually, I'd probably do two black. And then I can activate this. And then what I'm going to do before he ever untaps, I'm killing that stupid savior. You're not exiling my stuff. Go away. No tax. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a stop again because I'm going to create a token and sacrifice it. Maybe he might. He's probably just going to blow my cheddar spitter up. Well, maybe not. Let's see what he does. Yep, there's, there goes my spitter. Never mind. Grief. Where is my meat hook or my blood on the snow? I need them badly. Um. Hmm. What is the activation on that? A white? Hmm. I think I need to get rid of that. I really do. Let's go avert and embrace on Shatterfang. I think I need to kill that and I'm going to shock myself with this oh hey thanks you gave me the thing I needed to hit you with I'll take it and turn, and if he goes after anything, I'm killing that lion sash. Activate for one. You? No. And now I get a sapling and a squirrel. And all is right in the world. I had so much fun with this deck when I built it on Arena that I turned around and got all the stuff rounded up to make it in paper, too. All right, we got a bunch of two twos, huh? And a bunch of one ones. So, what do I do with that? Knowledge. Hmm. That's what, four, 10 damage? I don't wanna take 10 damage. Cause if I don't draw a board wipe, I'm screwed. I guess for now, let's just go ahead and trade. All right, Raven a squirrel. That is not going to get rid of this board state that's going to kill me eventually. And I won't have enough to cast it anyways if I do a card draw off of the squirrel. So... 
let's go ahead and sacrifice one of these. Not good enough. I got to sit back. I'm starting to think I'm in deep doo doo. Creature card. Oh, okay. Whatever. That I don't care about. That I do. We're going to block one of those. And shoot. I can't. Well, I guess we'll block here, block here. Crap. Yeah. And then I'm going to activate the squirrel. This. Because I got to have a board wipe or I'm just toast. Oh, asking ye shall refrickin' save. Right, let's do this next. I'm going to pound Vivian in the face. That did not sound good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, screw it. I have no way of casting after this, so... so let's just do it for seven. Screw it. Or actually, I don't even need to do that. Let's do it for five. What am I doing? That'll kill everything on the board, right? Except for Chatterfang. Commence the triggers. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll bring that back. Probably should have recast it, but oh well. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, one man, and I can do a Jozu vest kicked. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. Back to post. Hmm. Now that begs the question, what to do with that? Right, let's go ahead and drop Chatterfinger again. Let's do... I should have done this the other way. I did it out of order. That was stupid of me. Squirrel. But hey, you'll find I do stupid things on occasion in this channel. All right, what you gonna exile? I assume a creature. Mm, he took my ravenous squirrel, you suck. Oh, well, frick, okay. Yeah, hey, that's a thing. More triggers, let's go. Oh, I'm sure he's going to want to remove those counters so he can destroy my thing. There's the land I wanted a long time ago. Guess who's back? It's fine. He'll take out that. Okay. I'm confused by that. I figured he would have took out the Meat Hook Massacre, but okay. Let's go ahead and crack that. We'll get a curd. Oh, baby. It's the infinite combo. How do I... 
Because it's word two. Oh, do I do it? Do I do it and just make him scoop? Eh, I haven't played this kicked. I'm going to go for the fun play. I know I should just do the other way and hit him, but oh well. I think that's one of the first few times I've ever kicked him. And he didn't have any answers for that. So good game. Hmm. It's the first time I've seen bootlegger stash today. I think I'll keep this. We're going to treasure him to death. Um, let's do that first. Oh, hey, that's useful. Let's set that to green because we have double green and a lot of stuff. Scarab God. That's a dangerous deck. Set that to black. Let's go ahead and cultivate. And let's go ahead and get uh, a forest and a swamp. Play hand. Alright. Let's play this, we'll reveal this, because he already knows about it. Ooh, I can play bootleggers right now. Yeah, why not? That way he can't counter it if he's running counter magic. Necrodiality, okay. Now let's drop that swamp. Let's do... Let's do Shatterfang plus Chatterstorm. And we will pass a turn. And the bad part about on Arena with the bootlegger stash is now it's going to hang up every time because now those lands all have activated abilities. That's a little bit of a pain in the neck. I sense him either going to play the Scarab God or he's going to wipe the board. Um, let's go ahead and make treasure and uh, treasure in response. Resolve. All right, what to do here? If I do this, I have one, two, three, four, five mana available. Play that ogre, ogre slumlord. Yeah, why not? I want him to tap down so I can play an old knob bone and just swing, but oh, not gonna have that fun. He's gonna pick something and kill my board. Again, oh, poor Chatterfang. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. So he just did mill two of his 
anthem effects into his graveyard, so. One more time with feeling. We'll just sit back for the time being. I'm fairly certain that Arena has done a lot more damage to him than I have, actually. Only hit him for, what, six damage, maybe? I suck at math, so. Woohoo! Hmm. Like I said, poor Chatterfang, he just doesn't live. <laughs> And it's a good thing he's doing this crap because I would just drop that Piddle of Splendor next turn and just go to town. Um, hmm. Nine for Chatterfang or seven for Gnawbone and it probably dies anyways. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm just going to go ahead and drop Gnawbone for right now. Because then if I can manage to swing with it and get seven treasures after I drop the Chatterfang, then I'm not going to feel so bad. <laughs> Though if it dies right here, I'm still going to feel pretty crappy about it. Sorry, not paying attention. Um, I guess blah. You're in here, or do I just take this? I'm at twenty three. I'm just gonna take it. Screw it. Not that much damage. Though he's probably gonna wipe the board. I don't know that he would have swung otherwise. God, this is frustrating. Come on. Is that on cast or ETB? ETB, okay. frustration I need mana and I need a way to chain gun his stuff to death let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we should have plenty. Screw it. Chatterfang. Um, should have left more of the token, or I used more of this first, left more lands open. Four. All right, here comes the, what I call the infinite chain gun. And you just make bl black, sack the two squirrels. They're gonna die. Two more treasures are made. Do it again. I'll use two. 
do this one auto pay do those rinse and repeat And enter. Now, if he doesn't deal with Shatterfang again, I get to kill whatever he plays. Rise of the Dark Realms. That's great. Well, doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> wow. Holy crap. Flying Death Touch. Tokens have Hexproof and Menace. Okay. So, yeah. Holy crap. That's a lot. Uh, I think this is the point where I have to, man, I don't know. I think I might have just skipped the point where I needed to sacrifice the squirrels to stop his choo-choo train of pain here. Um, I think I need to start shooting. Let's go for the Death Barons first. It's like, I don't know. I'm There's so many things. I'm shooting the wrong stuff. That's the problem. That needs to be the next thing I shoot. Yes, I know I'm about to burn a timeout. So many actions. I wish I had more squirrels. <laughs> I should have shot the slumlord earlier, but whatever. Let's do it now. It's a good thing there's like not death triggers on the board, or I just would have killed myself a long time ago. Is it, oh, this guy. You need to go away. Uh, 
Oh, there goes another one. I do not like this in arena only because it's hard to pull off because you're sitting there just chain gunning. Can I kill him? Four, three, two, one. Oh, there's another one in there. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, that was fun. After all the deaths. All right, so what'd you guys think? I thought it it was a pretty good representation of what the deck can do and what it can't do. Uh, sorry for the boring, you know, click, click a thon with pitiless plunderer and shatter fang. That's what happens when you only have a couple of squirrels. The more squirrels you have, the quicker that goes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to suggest, make a set of suggestions now for commander instead of just this limited pool that we have here for brawl. And the first thing I would recommend adding to this deck is good old doubling season. You already got parallel lives in here, so let's get doubling season in on the act. Get, just go ahead and double up all those juicy tokens left, right, and center. And then speaking of the tokens, we have a big old pile here that I'm looking at from my deck that is ways to generate massive amounts of tokens with Chatterfang on the board. Uh, first up is Sapperling Symbiosis. For three and a green, you get a sorcery that says you can pay two more to play it at instant speed. And you put a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling token into play for each creature you control. So as long as you've been building your board state up, you basically double your board state and then you double it again because of Chatterfang. In the same vein, we have another hard-hitting creation of tokens card. Plague of Vermin for six and a black. You get a sorcery that says, starting with you, each player may pay any amount of life. Repeat this process until no one pays life. Each player puts a 1-1 one, one black rat token into play for each one life they paid this way. So for every rat you generate off of that, you get a squirrel as well, and it just spirals out of control if you have a token doubler on the board. And then we also have what I call the granddaddy in this deck. Army of the Damned for five black, black, black. You get a sorcery that creates 13 2 2 tapped zombie tokens and with flashback of seven black, black, black. So you create 13 zombies, you also create 13 squirrels, and then you can flash it back. So you basically can generate 26 tokens per casting. That's really good. And then we also have Rosda Guild Mage here. For a black and a green, you get a 2-2 two, two Elf Shaman that says uh, one black green target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains Intimidate, which means they have to, uh, it can't be blocked by anything but the color identity of the creature. And then the important part here is two black green, sacrifice a non-token creature, put X-1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature tokens onto the battlefield, equal to the toughness of the sacrificed creature. So if you have, I don't know, let's take a look here. Say Scurry Oak got up to like five on its evolves and you're having trouble getting it to evolve any further. Well, feed it in, turn it into five tokens, which then turn into five more squirrels. It's, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. I also have a copy of Thelonite Hermit for three and a green. You get an Elf Shaman that's a 1-1 one, one with Morph. Uh, it's morph cost is three green green. And if you don't know what morph is, you play it face down for three colorless as a two, two generic creature with no types or anything. And as you pay the morph cost, in this case, I've just mentioned three green green, it turns face up and it says sapperling creatures get plus one, plus one. So it's a Lord's card for sapperlings. And it also says when it is turned face up, put four green one, one sapperling tokens onto the battlefield. So you'll get the four sapperlings. You also get the tokens off of Shatterfang as well. Uh, another way to take advantage of all these tokens being generated. We have Michael off for three green, green, you get a four, four fungus with devour two. 
Uh, Devour is as it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice any number of creatures and it gets uh, twice that many plus one plus one counters on it. So if you sacrifice, you know, five squirrels or whatever to this, it's going to get 10 plus one plus one counters on it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one sapling token onto the battlefield for each counter on Michaeloth. So if you have 10 counters, you're going to get 10 sapperlings the next upkeep along with the squirrels that that'll generate. And that kind of snowballs out of control pretty quick. Uh, the last token generator that I would recommend here that you can't get in Brawl just yet is Emrakul's Evangel for two and for two and a green you get a 3-2 human horror that says tap and sacrifice it and any number of other non-Eldrazi creatures and put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror token onto the battlefield for each creature you sacrifice this way. So if you've already created, you know, three, four squirrel tokens or whatever, and you sacrifice those to the Evendell, then you get that many 3-2s, so you're upgrading your 1-1s into 3-2s, but then you're replacing the 1-1s with Chatterfang on the board as well. So it's kind of a nice little uh, double up. And then the last card I would recommend here to take advantage of all these little creatures sitting around on your board and to refill your hand up is Shamanic Revelation. For 3 green green, you get a sorcery that says draw a card for each creature you control, and if those creatures have power or 4 or greater, you gain 4 life for each one of them that has that power 4 or greater. The only other thing that I would highly recommend if you're going to do Chatterfang in paper, don't buy the the generic regular art. It's, I mean, it's a great art and all, but I much prefer the full art. Uh, even in non-foil, the full art, I think, is just much better for Chatterfang. And I would say, uh, if you're going to spend the money on Chatterfang, just spend the extra, like, three or four bucks and buy the, the uh, borderless version instead. So that's the deck. I hope you enjoyed the little bit of gameplay I threw together here. I'm just going to do the three games today because they're a little bit longer than some of the other ones I've done. I really appreciate all you guys out there, and if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.